In the last couple of lectures, we learned about behavior subject and replay subject and how they are different from each other. Now, there is also a third variant of subject which is called as async subject. So, in this lecture, let's learn about async subject. An async subject only passes the last or latest emitted value to all its subscribers. Also, async subject will only send the last emitted value to all its subscribers only after the complete method on the async subject is called. Let's try to understand it with an example. So in the last lecture, we created this replay subject. Let me go ahead and let me comment it. Okay, let me also comment these subscribers here. And here, let's go ahead and let's learn about async subject. Alright, so let's first go ahead and let's create an async subject. For that, let's first create a variable. Let's call it maybe async subject. And to this, we are going to assign an instance of async subject. And for that, we are going to use new keyword and we are going to call the constructor of async subject class. And in order to use this async subject, we also need to import it from RxJS. So let's import it here. Okay. So in this way, we are creating an instance of async subject. Now this async subject, it can emit some value. And for emitting a value on this async subject, we can call next method. And from here, let's say we want to emit 100. In the same way, let's call this next method on this async subject two more times. And we want to emit 200 and we want to emit 300. Now, for this async subject, let's create a subscriber. For that, on this async subject, we are going to call the subscribe method. And to this subscribe method, let's pass a callback function. That callback function will receive the data which this async subject is going to emit. So let's simply call it as data. And what we are going to do is, we are simply going to log that data in the console. So let's say console.log and here I'll use backticks and there I will say subscriber1 and then I will log the data. Okay. Now, what we have learned about async subject? We learned that async subject is going to emit the last emitted value to all its subscribers. In this example, the last emitted value which this async subject is emitting is 300. So this 300 will be sent to all its subscribers. Currently, we have only one subscriber. So this subscriber will receive the latest emitted value, the last emitted value. In this case, it should receive 300. But async subject will only pass the last emitted value to all its subscribers only after the complete method is called on that async subject. So, currently, if I go to the web page, let's clear everything here. And if the page reloads, you will notice that nothing has been logged here. So, here we have a subscriber for this async subject, and this async subject is also emitting some value. So, the latest value should be received by the subscriber, and that value should be logged in the console. But currently, you will notice that no value is being logged in the console. That's because, as I mentioned earlier, this async subject will only emit the value to all its subscribers after we have called the complete method on that async subject. Currently, we are not calling the complete method on this async subject. So that's why it is not emitting the latest value. But if I go ahead and if I call the complete method on this async subject, and now if we save the changes and if you go to the web page, now you will notice that in the console, that value, the latest value which that async subject has emitted, that has been logged here. So the latest value which this async subject is emitting is 300. So that 300 is now passed to this subscriber when we have called this complete method. So this is how the async subject works. So always remember that the async subject will only emit a value after the complete method is called on it. If the complete method is not called, even though we are emitting some value from the async subject, it will not reach to all its subscribers. Now, if you are emitting any other value from the async subject after the complete method, for example, 
here we are calling the complete method on this async subject after that let's say on that async subject again we are calling the next method to emit some value for example 400 now this value here it will be ignored it will not get emitted from this async subject because as we have learned earlier also once the complete method is called on an observable after that if we are emitting any value that value will not get emitted by the observable here we are emitting this value 400 after we have called this complete method that means this observable this async subject observable it has already emitted the complete signal so after that if we try to emit any value that will not get emitted so here the latest value is still 300 and that will be passed to all its subscribers so again if we go to the web page there you will see that 300 is logged and not 400 and we can also do the same thing by calling this complete method after we have a subscriber so currently this async subject is emitting these three values 100 200 and 300 but it is not emitting any complete signal so we are subscribing to that async subject and after that i'm going to call the complete method so now this async subject has emitted the complete signal so in this case the latest value will be passed to all its subscribers now again the latest value will be 300 and not 400 because once the complete signal is called no more value can be emitted from the observable so the last emitted value will be always that value which has been emitted before calling the complete signal so here also the latest value will be 300 and that will be logged in the console as you can see now let's go ahead and let's add one more subscriber for this async subject so here i'm adding one more subscriber and in the message let's say subscriber 2 so again as we learned the async subject it will pass the last emitted value to all its subscribers it will pass the last emitted value before the complete method is called on that async subject so in this example here we are calling the complete method on this async subject so before this this value 300 has been emitted by the async subject so this value this is the latest value which this async subject is emitting so this value will be passed to all its subscribers so the same value we are going to receive for subscriber 1 and subscriber 2 so if i go to the web page you will notice that both subscriber 1 and subscriber 2 are receiving the same latest value 300 so keep in mind that the async subject will always return the last emitted value before complete function is called on it to the current subscriber as well as all the future subscribers now if we call this complete method twice so for example after emitting this value 400 also if i call this complete this complete will be ignored because we have already emitted the complete signal that means this observable now cannot emit any further value it cannot emit any value or it cannot emit any complete signal so this complete will be ignored okay so the latest value is still going to be 300 and not 400 because before emitting this 400 we have already called this complete signal so the observable has emitted the complete signal so the latest value will be the value which has been emitted before calling this complete signal in this case 300 so still the latest value which this async subject is emitting is 300 and that will be passed to all its subscribers so again if i go to the web page you will notice that the value is still 300 so i hope with these examples now you understand what is an async subject and how it works an async subject always emits a single value that is it emits the last emitted value before the complete method is called on the async subject so now you know all the three variants of subject that is the behavior subject replay subject and async subject which is available in rxjs and i hope now you also understand the difference between the behavior subject replay subject and async subject and when to use one over the other so this is all about subjects in rxjs now in the next lecture let's try to understand the difference between a promise and an observable this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day